Good morning. This is Czech Warner, managing partner of Ada Ventures out of London. Welcome to European Women in VC. Great to see you in the new year. Thank you so much. It's brilliant to be here. Welcome. Um, Czech, so you're the founding partner of Ada Ventures. It's a super new and super disruptive fund out of London. It's market cap at the moment, the commitment size is around, uh, around 50 million. And you're looking to invest into overlooked founders and markets. But actually, you originally started your career, I think, in marketing. Could you just take us through how you got into VC? What attracted you to the sector? Yeah, of course. So um, as you say, I started in marketing and marketing is really all about trying to understand which ideas will resonate with customers um, and how do you kind of frame uh, communication to uh, catch customers' eye. And, and that's actually what we do in venture. We try to evaluate what's going to work, you know, one year down the line, three years down the line, five years down the line. So there's more synergies actually than you might think. But I was really interested in getting involved in technology. I knew that technology was going to be this massive thing that was going to transform uh, the way that we live and work. And that's that's played out. And um, I was very excited about working with incredible inspira inspirational people who are building the future. So that's what attracted me to VC. And I haven't looked back you know, six years later. Brilliant. So before setting up your fund with Matt Pennycard, you worked for Seraphim Capital, Downing Ventures and Techstars. So all this experience that you've gained from the sector, what did that teach you and what are the lessons learned in then setting up your own VC funds? Yeah, so many. Um, I think, you know, the main one was about how venture capital needed to, to transform and to become more inclusive and fairer to the entrepreneurs that were trying to access it, to the people who were uh, involved in the VC industry. So one of the things that I co-founded whilst at Downing was Diversity VC, and that's all about, you know, who gets to make investment decisions, who gets to be at the table in the industry and open that up. Um, but with ADA, what we have done is try to reshape the way that capital is um, accessed uh, by entrepreneurs and also how we make investment decisions and make that as fair and inclusive as possible. So um, I've learned that. I've also learned a lot about how to communicate with entrepreneurs um, how to avoid making as many mistakes as I did in, in the first few years of, of my career. Um, but I'm sure I've still got a hell of a lot to learn as well. Yeah, those are all important lessons that uh, you bring as your experience into the fund. So I was wondering, because now it's been one year, you've just celebrated your first anniversary. Surely you, again, learned a lot on the market, you've achieved a lot. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that, how that first year of investment has been for you? And then what are your plans for the upcoming months? Yeah, it's been an interesting first year, not what we expected. Um, obviously, the COVID pandemic has made a lot of um, changes to what we were planning to execute. We haven't been able to travel. We haven't been able to go and see people in person. Um, so we've had to invest you know, over Zoom, as, as many people have. And we've made a couple of investments in teams that we've never met in person. Um, so that's been an interesting kind of uh, something that we needed to adapt to. I think counterintuitively, instead of what we thought would happen, which is that the market would get much, much slower and colder and people wouldn't invest so much. Actually, it's gone completely the other way and it's hotter than ever. And tech is this sector that's attracting so much capital from all these large asset managers who are looking at tech as one of the few sectors that, that there is growth. Um, and so we've had to rethink about what our, what our model looks like and actually investing slightly bigger checks to get the ownership that we are targeting. Mm -hmm. So we've ended up um, doing a few more investments at the seed stage at slightly bigger checks. And I think that that will only continue. Um, we've also you know, learned that our model really resonates with people. We've, we've been really fortunate that we've had an incredible reaction from the market to say, you know, we want a fund data to exist. And when we meet entrepreneurs, they <clears throat> are super excited about somebody who's trying to disrupt and transform the way that venture capital is allocated. Yes, and all of that is because you have a very special mission and a special investment thesis. 
you're discovering these really overlooked markets and turning things upside down, looking at from different perspectives. Could you talk a little bit about that thesis and what the kind of opportunities that you are seeing that fit well into, into your thesis? Yeah, absolutely. So we believe the world is changing very rapidly. And I think that all of the, the things that we've seen over the last year with COVID and with Black Lives Matter have been reinforced our view that that's the case. So these big demographic shifts are going on where you've got a more diverse population, women becoming more powerful and important in these conversations. Uh, you've got a new generation coming through that care much more about sustainability. And then you've got an aging population as well. And we believe the most important value creator in venture is what are these drivers of these, these changes over the next 10 years. And that's our job is to invest in things that are going to be really pushed by these tailwinds. And so we, we look at markets that we didn't exist five years ago. We look at problems that other people maybe have underestimated or never really understood. So for example, we've invested in a company called Juno Bio, which is a uh, vaginal microbiome. They're creating the world's biggest and first data set on the vaginal microbiome, which is an area of biology that really hasn't yet been explored. Um, totally different example in the future of workspace. We've invested in a company called Organize, which is bringing people together who um, work in jobs um, that they don't necessarily get a chance to connect with their colleagues or with other people in similar lines of work. And it allows them this platform to campaign for better rights at work. So those are you know, really quite different businesses that you may not be able to imagine unless you're somebody who is experiencing that problem firsthand. So our whole fund is set up to expose us to people who experience different kinds of problems that are potentially counterintuitive or new or different from the you know, kinds of things that VC would have been investing in for the last 10 years. And clearly because of that thesis, you're investing in projects that have huge market potential, huge valuation potential, and then huge exit potential in the end because you're investing in the long term. So you're really looking at things that where well, you are first, right? I mean, these are projects that are often overlooked by a standard VC. So that's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Thank you. Well, we'll see. I was wondering, you know, in terms of Ada, it's Ada, not Ada, I suppose. Um, could you just run us through what is the kind of project that ideally fits your, uh, your investment thesis? So in terms of size of the ticket and you like co-investments and so on, just, you know, the basics so that uh, the people who are following us know what to approach you with and when. Of course, yeah. So we invest at pre-seed and seed. These terms are bandied around kind of jargon, but what that means for us in terms of check size is £250,000 is the sort of smallest check we'll write, a million pounds or 1.25 is about the biggest check we'll write, and we'll do rounds of between 500k up to about 2 million. Um, we can lead, we can follow, we don't mind. We're looking for people who are reshaping, transforming industries. We're looking for people building products and services in spaces that have been ignored or undervalued. Um, we're looking for people that really have that outsized vision of how they can build a business that gets to huge global scale and value. Um, so if you wanna have kind of a bit more of an idea of what we look at, we've actually written our, our seed investing framework that's on our website. Um, that's how we evaluate companies. And obviously you can see our portfolio on our website as well for the kinds of companies and kinds of founders that get us really excited. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the geographical spread, what, what is your main focus and then where else could you go? Yeah, so we're UK focused. Um, we invest in companies that have a UK presence. So if you're a company that maybe has headquarters elsewhere or is, is sometimes based elsewhere, you'd need to have a presence in the UK for us to look at you. Okay, so that's something that can be built also, I suppose, with the funds that you're investing in, right? Okay, yes. so that, that, that means it's actually open up to the whole world in a sense, right? I mean, you could be looking for, pro for projects right across. Okay, that's, that's, I think that's great news for some of the founders that are watching us. Um, I wanted to ask you, because you've just increased the fund size and you've brought over some really incredible investors. 
uh, to widen your investor base, including big society capital, for example. Uh, but it's been the COVID year. So what has fundraising been like? Did you encounter anything different? Did you already have these relationships earlier that you just kind of closed or were some of them new? How, how did that go? Yeah, the great questions. Um, in, it, it's a mixture. It's been an interesting year to fundraise. Um, but as I say, that kind of counterintuitive dynamic has been going on where actually I think people have started looking at tech and thinking that, that is an interesting space to invest at this point, even when, you know, in the global financial crisis, you know, a lot of the industries kind of went completely bust. Actually, tech was pretty robust and investing in early stage startups would have been a great idea at that point. So I think smart investors, you know, know that they need to invest throughout cycles and sort of sort out venture. But there were some relationships that we had, such as with Big Society Capital, that we were pre-existing to the COVID crisis. So it was a case really of reiterating to them you know, why this strategy was still as relevant as it was you know, pre-COVID. And I'd say that was a useful thing for founders to think about is kind of how, do you, how does COVID change or impact or accelerate or you know, affect your strategy? It's good to have a slide in there that talks to that. Um, but there were other relationships that were completely new. So there's several of our LPs that we literally met on Zoom. Um, and so we, we understand you know, how difficult it is sometimes to convey what you're trying to do and you know, why you're passionate and you know, get to know people via Zoom. Uh, but we were you know, really pleasantly surprised actually that they were prepared to you know, spend time with us and uh, get to know us for the first time over a short period of time and then you know, be prepared to make a 10 year commitment, which is what they're doing with mm -hmm. this fund. I think it, it definitely helped us that we'd already done a first close, we'd already started investing, we could demonstrate that we were in business, that we were recognized and do all of the things that when we were fundraising the first time, we said, oh, we will do this, we will do that. But the evidence wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But now you had a great track record showing exactly your investment thesis reflected in the startups that you've backed, right? Yeah, I mean, it's early days. You know, many of our companies, some of them are more than a year old. So we've had one company raise Series A, which is great, but you know, most of them are still very nascent and yeah, it isn't yet proven out. But um, I think what the investors that we fundraise from this time really bought into is that we had been talking about the importance of changing VC and a more inclusive model and these kind of societal shifts and investing in companies that were addressing those issues. And then everything that happened with COVID and with um, Black Lives Matter and, and the sort of social unrest kind of reinforced that. So I think it, it was not the case that, you know, other funds might have sort of thought, oh, gosh, we should probably change our strategy and kind of capture more of that. But for us, it was very much what we'd already been doing. Actually, your mission from Ada Ventures is actually something that you've been working on out of diversity VC already, uh, I suppose. It's something that it's an association or how would you call it that you founded a number of years ago, uh, a nonprofit that yep. is focused on increasing diversity across venture, across the tech industry. Uh, would you just run us through how it started and where are you so far with that initiative? Yeah, absolutely. So it was a, um, you know, it is a collaboration. It's a, it's a group effort of a lot of people who are in the industry who volunteer, and we all share a, a belief and a passion that venture capital should be accessible to everyone, and that founders raising money, you know, can come from anywhere. And so Diversity VC started when we, as associates, myself, Travis and Lillian, um, looked around the industry, and we just didn't see that much diversity at all, both in the VC side and the founder side. And so we started Diversity VC to change that. And we do uh, an internship program called Future VC. We've done a lot of data uh, studies and we've recently launched the Diversity VC standard, which is a certification for VC funds that helps them to understand what they need to do to become more inclusive. And then it actually assesses them against um, that standard. And then they get a level one if they have enough of the policies and initiatives in place that they are being inclusive. So it's um, a really exciting project to be involved with. I think we've made massive kind of impact in the few years that we've been around. Um, and I look forward to hopefully scaling that. And we've just launched a chapter that's in Iberia. We've just launched um, or about to launch a chapter 
uh, that's in Peru. We've got a US chapter. So we're starting to really go global with it, which is super exciting. Yeah, that's actually how we met uh, with your work with Diversity VC earlier. Um, I guess in one of your reports, um, one of your earlier reports, you also spoke about this huge gender gap on the VC market in terms of female-led funds, female mm -hmm. decision-making in the investment teams and so on. And even though your work originally focused on the UK, it's still true and holds true for the vast majority of the world. Um, mm -hmm. What is your opinion, what needs to be done to get more females to lead funds, to lead investments? How can we change this really small percentage into something that's at least double digits and significant? Yeah, uh, th there's lots of overlapping factors. Something I wrote about when raising Ada was a reflection on how expensive it was and how inaccessible it was for anyone to start a fund. I mean, first of all, you probably need to have started in the industry itself, which in and of itself, you need to maybe have been to a certain university, been to a certain school because of the way that the recruitment happens, um, all of which have kind of barriers associated with household income. So then you go and raise a fund and actually you need a GP permit, you need to pay for legal fees, you need to pay for your working capital for 18 months, two years. And it's completely inaccessible if you don't have either you know, an exited startup behind you. And we know that already th there's not much diversity in the sort of C-suite levels of, you know, Series A-backed companies. Um, you know, or you need family money. And that's kind of pretty much the only two pathways at the moment to starting your own fund. Um, so I think, you know, it's multiple things. It's actually making sure that the VC industry itself at the senior levels has more diversity. And, you know, that means partner level, that means on it IC, it means carried interest. We also need to make sure that there are more founders being funded who come from diverse backgrounds so that they can then go on, you know, go into venture afterwards and raise their own funds. Um, but I think we also need to change the way that, you know, LPs, limited partners, assess funds, how they meet funds. You know, none of that is actually accessible. I think we need a kind of aid of ventures equivalent in the LP world. Um, and we also need to change the way that the GP works and the barriers that are really financial as opposed to the barriers that should be really about performance are you good enough that's fine but they shouldn't be do you have enough money mm -hmm. yeah I'm looking through the LPs world at least in Europe there isn't really a clear leader who says that diversity is a priority I think that's rather unfortunate I'm still hoping that there will be one that will emerge you know the way Melinda Gates always speaks about investing for example in women and in women-led funds I'd love to see um, an LP like that in Europe that really forces and pushes through this diversity agenda and also gets others on board and then catalyzes this whole theme yeah I think there are a few I mean we're very lucky to have a couple that you know, have absolutely done that. So Atomico is one of our LPs. They were the first LP to commit and they care deeply about diversity and inclusion. So they are doing some great work. Uh, we've got a group called First Close Partners in the US, which is all focused on um, investing in that first close of diverse led funds. Um, the British Business Bank is catalyzing a lot of people to be interested in this and have done a lot of research. So no, I think they're doing a great job. And then Big Society Capital as well um, are, are interested in, in backing um, more diverse led funds. So th there's some really interesting groups coming through, but I agree with you. I think it needs to be 10x, 100x more than that. Yeah, I think you've been very lucky. I say you sitting in the, in the UK, because actually UK has been the leader, a clear leader in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. of helping females to fundraise or having females on exactly decision-making bodies, investment teams, and so on. So it's absolutely wonderful. And, and yes, like you said, I hope that we get more of this uh, right across Europe. Um, in terms of actually females fundraising now from a kind of startup perspective, have you mm -hmm. seen more or less females fundraising as founders, as mixed teams, uh, or diverse founders actually in the recent 12 months? Has it gone up or down? Because the news has been pretty bad, but maybe, you know, maybe there's some light in that tunnel. Yeah, I mean, it's been broadly consistent for us. We yeah. see about half of our teams that approach us have a female founder, yeah. which is quite different from most funds um, where it's more like kind of 10 to 15%. 
but I think that that's a reflection of the brand that we've got, you know, our intentionality around that, I think attracts uh, teams that have more diversity, have more gender diversity. I think one of the things that I am encouraged by is that people who come from you know, places around the UK, you know, in our case, um, or maybe who have, you, you know, don't have the ability to go out on an evening and attend a pitch deck because they have caring responsibilities. Yeah. They are able to pitch on Zoom and many of them feel more comfortable, more confident pitching on Zoom. And you know, people with disabilities or people who are heavily pregnant, like you don't necessarily need to have that be something that people instantly, you know, are aware of before you do your pitch. Um, so I am encouraged by that. But as I said, as you say, you know, I think what has also been going on is that people who have existing relationships have reverted back to those relationships and only decided to invest in people who they already knew pre-pandemic and aren't prepared to make investment decisions with new people who they might only have met on Zoom. So it's very much mixed. Um, hopefully more female founders will use the opportunity to have technology as a part of their future fundraising as well, and that will make them make it easier for them, I hope very much. Mm. Um, as a final note check, I wanted to ask something more about you. What, what are the current things that inspire you? Are you reading something interesting, watching or doing that you could share with others so that they are also excited by it and, and find it inspiring? Um, I am at the moment doing a course called 21 Days of Abundance, which is a meditation course. Um, and it's quite fun because you can do it with friends and you can kind of link people together. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that quite a good way to create some space away from some of the negative news that we're seeing and, and there's at the moment very little that we can do in London because we're sort of locked down in our house <laughs> so for me kind of meditation is one of the few things that's available but I, I love reading um and I I read a lot of fiction and non-fiction as well um and yeah I, I also do a bit of writing which is great fun but I'm constantly inspired by the people that I'm lucky enough to meet in the work that we do it's just amazing i think we're so fortunate particularly at times like these where we get to spend all day every day meeting people who are quite literally creating the future that we want to exist brilliant i think that's a brilliant summary uh it's great to have funds with a clear mission and a clear thesis uh, in changing the world. And I think that that's part of the huge responsibility of actually being in venture is that you get to fund the things that then have more of a chance to succeed. So it's brilliant that you are driven by a clear mission on that to make the world a more equal and more accessible place and to also fund those overlooked sectors. Um, congratulations on the fund. And well done. And I hope that there are many founders that will approach you also after us talking. So good luck with everything with Ada. And I hope to see you soon in person. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the amazing work that you do, catalyzing and bringing together women who are starting funds. It's, it's really great that, that you're playing that role in the ecosystem. Um, and yeah, I look forward to collaborating on more research and content and things to help female founders in the, in the coming years. Brilliant. That was Chick Warner from Ada Ventures in London. Thanks so much. Have a great day, Chick. Take care.